Hello, so my name is uh, George Hurrell. I farm here in uh, South Cambridgeshire with my dad and my brother in a farming partnership. Um, we are, I'm technically the second generation here. My father was the first generation. Before that, the, uh, the land had uh, numerous tenants across it and we didn't actually farm it in hand, but that's going back to the 50s. Um, we farm around 4,000 acres, depending on um, cropping. Uh, our staple is wheat and barley uh, and sugar peat at the moment. And um, we grow a bit of oilseed rape, um, although that's got a question mark over it. Um, we farm about 2,000 acres in the village of Newton, which is uh, basically very near the M11 uh, and the A10, um, just south of Cambridge, four miles south of Cambridge, four and a half miles south of Cambridge. Um, and we're on chalk here. We're on very light chalk. Um, we do a bit of contract farming here at home. So we farm 500 acres uh, just over in the neighbouring county into Essex. Um, and then we have another base, another one of our own farms up at Swaffham Prior, which is sort of near Newmarket, between Newmarket and Burwell. Uh, and we have another site beyond that, uh, the village of Stretton on the A10. Um, we grow sugar beet, as mentioned. Uh, we also... Uh, have potatoes moving around uh, all the farms, um, utilising water that we have here on the farm, either through a reservoir or through um, an EU-funded cooperative reservoir uh, based over near Stapleford, about four miles away, that services, I think it's about a dozen farmers. Um, we also have cattle here on the farm. So we have a small suckler herd of about 60 cows now um, and we buy in rose veal calves. So we do those in batches of 100 and um, get through two of those a year. So uh, we like the muck and there's a bit of money and it almost offsets the loss from the suckler herd a little bit. Um, we love the cows. We're not really in a cattle growing part of the country here or cattle rearing part of the country. So... Um, Easy to feel isolated or easy to feel uh, on your own a bit, but uh, we have 100 acres of parkland, um, which we, we have to utilise one way or another. Uh, I think the cows will probably be quite integ integral to uh, any future environmental schemes uh, going forward. Uh, we are currently in uh, HLS, so we have um, 125 acres of land under uh, different options, ranging from wild bird mixes, pollen and nectar mixes, six metre margins. Uh, we have two hectare fallow plots in the middle of fields. Uh, we, uh, we have lots of, different, lots of different features. We're a big believer in it. Uh, we like what it does. Um, we, like, we, we certainly see a benefit to it. Um, uh, and it changes the landscape because around here we are a very, very arable area. You know, they talk about this part of the area being sort of the breadbasket of, um, of the UK. And uh, we are very, very arable. Machinery wise, uh, we, we don't need huge horsepower on this farm. Um, being on light soils um, or predominantly light soils, we, uh, we tend to pull sort of wider implements with smaller horsepower. We can get away with doing less cultivations. We can do a little bit of direct drilling, which is, uh, which is what we do. Um, we are very plough based though um, because we're so light and um, I'm not saying what we do is the right way to farm or I'm not saying it's everyone should go and try it but it's what works for us. Um, we, uh, we are still very much plough based, we probably plough 70% of the farm each year, um, certainly with root crops involved um, they all get ploughed beforehand um, and ploughing is cheap for us, it's a cheap cultivation. So we run a, a 10 furrow and a 6 furrow plough. Um, we can pull the ten fire with 280 horsepower on, on, on the light land, or lightest land, um, but that normally sits on a, a bigger 300 horsepower tractor. Um, we drill with a Vardastat drill. Uh, we do have a horse as well. Um, we bought the horse a few years ago, second hand, a sprinter, and we took the legs off it and put Dutch openers on it. And we experiment with a bit of direct drilling. Um, we direct drilled our rape this year and... Um, we do other things with it, like we've we drilled some spring barley into some cover crops. Um, we use it for our HLS areas for going straight into uh, redrill wild bird mixes and things like that. Uh, and we also use it for our game covers. Um, so we like it. I think it's a really handy drill. But predominantly we drill most of the stuff with the Vardastat. Um, we're on, on some of the lighter chalks. We can get away with ploughing the land. We might have to run the discs over it. Um, more often than not, the rolls. 
uh, then we'll disc the headlands and um, be able to drill it. Uh, we are very lucky in that way. Um, we uh, we bought our first press this year, <laughs> second hand, um, and uh, it just shows that we we although we need consolidation, we don't have to move big lumps of soil. Uh, we are very light, so as I keep saying, so and you know in 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 dry years we do we do see the negative effects of that and we do see lower yields in dry years there's no doubt about it um, and we have to feed our soils we have to feed our soils pretty heavily um, which we do you know we put our own farmyard manure on um, we put on digestate we put on sewage sludge um, we buy in chicken muck so we have uh, we have plenty of organic matter going back on uh, we grow cover crops as well so we do field scale cover crops we're growing about uh, it depends on the year and the rotation, but anywhere between sort of 50 to 200 acres of, of cover crops across the farm. And uh, we are directly drilling into some of them. Uh, other ones, we have, we have grazed in them in the past with sheep. Um, so we're kind of, as all, the, as all the direct drilling professionals keep saying, on the journey. Um, Machinery-wise, tractor-wise, we tend to keep um, sort of the three main tractors pretty up to date. Uh, that would be a, a track layer, which is a fent track layer. At the moment, we have a, an eight to eight vent as well, and a uh, that does all the fert spreading. And then we have a, 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 a JCB fast track on a horse, which does all the spraying. Um, we then have a, a, a John Deere eight five twenty, which is an, an old girl, but um, very handy to have. Doesn't do a huge amount of hours a year, but well, sits on the ten fire plow most of the time. Uh, it's just been spoilt to new Green Star. GPS, which is a, a big investment for us uh, on a 14-year-old tractor, but um, it certainly made the job easier. We have to also run um, sort of some smaller tractors because of the livestock uh, and the distances we cover. You know, uh, we're 35, 30 miles, uh, well, 35, I think, if you take a bad route uh, from farm to farm. So we have to have small little tractors for carting things, moving things round, um, bulk urea. We still use a fair bit of um, uh you know carting grain moving straw and anyway, i'm going on a tangent so well we have to, we have to have a few um, a few little tractors knocking around uh we have a, a 15 year old fence that sits on the hedge cutter and does a bit of corn carting uh 718 and we have a class um which does a bit of drilling on the four meter drill on the horse and does has a front end loader so it does a bit of relief loader work um flailing topping you name it um we don't buy all new machine all new machinery. Um, the stuff that's going to get used a lot, we tend to buy new and keep in warranty. But we're not adverse to buying second hand. Um, certainly, implements and 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 tractors. Um, it's gone are the days of being able to buy everything new. Uh, but for us and at our scale, to have sort of three decent tractors with warranty. Um, we can just about get a buy with get by with those, and so we have to try and run pretty lean, um, as do you know most farms. We can't spend a fortune on kit. Yeah, well, it's nice to see you guys back on the farm. Um, we're on our first day of harvest today. So we started in some old seed rape, um, which is disappointing, it's seriously disappointing. It's doing about two ton a hectare. And uh, this is the last year we're growing rape. We've struggled on with it for the last three, four years with the lack of seed dressing. And I don't think these insecticides work as well as they think, you know, it's under pressure all year round, so we're not growing it, growing it going forward. But that's difficult for us because we're on land that can't hold, it can't really hold a second wheat. So we have to have more break crops than most. But we'll just have to increase our area of sugar beet, peas, uh, things like that. Um, this year has been an absolute nightmare on the farm in, in in account of the weather. Really, we had an incredibly wet winter, the wettest winter for 30 years. Uh, and then when it did stop raining in March, um, it, we didn't have any rain. We had no rain for the whole of May. Uh, we had 13 mil in April, 
Um, so the spring crops don't look exceptional, I must admit, they really don't look very good. But I think everybody in the farming world and certainly everybody around here is just ready to draw a line under this year and start again next year, which is completely understandable, I think. And the same with, you know, obviously everything that's gone on with the coronavirus. Um, but um, what have we done since we last saw you? Um, we've been busy. We've had, we've got more calves in, so we've had another group. We've had 100 calves go, and we've got another 100 in. They arrived last week, um, so we're half full, half capacity with the veal at the moment. Our suckler herd are all out, um, which is nice. It's easy when they're out. Um, we've, in the last couple of weeks, we've done a lot of uh, drilling of wild bird mixes and things like that. Um, some of our environmental features we have to redrill annually, some we can get away with redrilling every two years. What we're doing here with the wild bird mix is we put barley. The wild bird mixes have to be made up of a cereal and then three or four other species. So what we do is we put barley in the main hopper on the drill and then we've added a front hopper, which is normally uh, is a rape caster. So we put the small seed mix in there and then pipe them down to different legs. And it means that we can do our, our environmental strips in one hit. Uh, which is really handy. You just move less soil, keep the moisture in. And um, they're normally really fiddly little corners as well. So going in and ploughing them and ripping them up and doing all of that is, just takes time. So uh, being able to direct drill them this year has made a big difference to us. Um, infrastructure wise, we've had a, every sort of five years, we have a bit of a spend on infrastructure or infrastructural things. So we've had new grain walling going in. Go, go in. Um, we spent quite a bit of money on things like road planing, some track grading, and after this winter there was quite a lot of um, remedial work that had to be done to not only the tracks but corners of fields and beat clamps and lots of, uh, lots of areas. We've got some parts of the farm where we loaded beet out in the, you know, sort of after Christmas that we couldn't get a spring crop in, they were too wet. So we've got sort of corners that we've had to just put some, a cover crop in. Um, but I think we're pretty lucky in comparison to most people in other parts of the country. You know, we've got 80% we got of our wheat in, and I think you know, some people struggled to get 30, 40% of what they'd originally anticipated in. But hey ho, life goes on. Our bird mix, we plant um, barley, wheat, millet, kale, uh, a mixture of things. Um, and what it does is it provides uh, feed to birds in the winter, is the idea. We also supplementary feed alongside these hard tracks as part of the environmental scheme for birds during the, through the hungry gap, as they call it. And I believe, well, I'll have to check my book, that runs from November through to May, I believe. So we come out here every other day with a spinner on the front of the gator and, uh, and get that done. But uh, our environmental scheme isn't just wild bird mixes. We also have pollen and nectar mixes. There's one over on the other end of this field. They look really good this time of year. They're quite cool because we have to cut those at certain times and we're only allowed to cut half of them. So it simulates later flowering flowers and later pollinating flowers. So we're trying to create varied habitats across the farm, basically. We also, as part of our agreement, have to have 15 hectares of overwintered stubble, which is a, it's quite good for cleaning the land up. It also is very attractive to hair courses, which isn't great. Um, but we get that plough pretty quickly uh, in February. So we are uh, we're in a higher level stewardship environmental um, agreement. Um, so it's now an outdated scheme. Um, there used to be ELS and HLS. That should then change to um, countryside stewardship and now we're staring down the barrel of a new scheme called ELMS where, where there's just been very, very limited information released about it. Um, so not a lot of farmers are getting very excited because they just don't know. Um, these environmental schemes are just becoming so important uh, for the farms because it's where our sort of our subsidy is going to be coming from. It's, they make us accountable to the public as well. Um, I think that... Um, I think that I, well, I really hope that environmental schemes have a big part within agriculture going forward because the, there is a lot of block cropping and sort of monoculture within agriculture now and um, 
it's good to have these schemes. Um, we, as part of our environmental scheme, um, we have six metre margins, some floristically enhanced, some not. Um, so again, a, a, a diverse sort of habitat for plants, for, for flora and fauna all over the place. Um, yeah, we have 146 acres taken out of production now for, uh, for this. And I think that area is only gonna go up and up. We finished harvesting wheat about two weeks ago, um, which was relatively early for us. Um, yields were variable, but what we, we averaged 8.9 tonne a hectare, which I was absolutely amazed at. Uh, I didn't think we'd come close to that. I mean, it's not, we don't grow the best wheat here, but that is a, that's a distinctly average year for us, or a distinctly average yield. So given the, uh, given the conditions, it was uh, relatively good. Oil seed rape was a, I think we discussed oil seed rape was an absolute write off last time we're growing that, which is really difficult because that now sort of pushes us into a corner break crop wise, um, which is why we're here looking at the, the canary seed. This is a break crop we've been trying now for it's our second year of growing it, and I'm still kind of on the fence. It doesn't make a huge amount of money, but it's very, very cheap to grow. So we don't plant it until about March. Um, Agronomically, very easy. It doesn't use busting amount of fertilizer. Uh, it's, uh, it's we think it's an okay break crop for us. Um, desperate times when it comes to these break crops. Um, we really like the straw. The cows eat the straw, uh, which is something we hadn't really. It wasn't the reason we looked at the crop. It was. Uh, it just seems to be a sort of a happy coincidence that the, the cows will eat it. And uh, we've had some tested, and it's just it's got a little bit less fiber and protein in it than barley straw. But in a year like this, when we're going to be short of barley straw anyway, uh, it's quite lucky to have this option. And then hopefully if we have a bit of barley straw left in the spring, we'll flog that. So we'll see how we go. I mean, um, it's been a funny harvest. I mean, 2020 has been a funny year. Um, it's been a really funny harvest. We had a really good run. We combined straight for, well, I think, 18 days or something. So we managed to cover some ground. The highlight of the year, or the highlight of of the harvest has been our spring barley over at Swaffer Prior. That yielded really well. That was drilled in February. We were, we were able to just get on really sort of a month before a lot of people were able to get on. And we combined it a month ago and um, half it was a seed crop and, and that's all done what it's meant to do. And the other half has uh, hit spec. So you've got to take some little victories <laughs> this year. Uh, as I said, we're not growing rape, so it's funny. This, um, this time of year, we're normally you know, uh, direct drilling rape, rolling it spraying it non-stop but um, it seems a bit funny not to be doing that but um, we've done other things over the last couple of weeks we've been muck spreading we've um, we started cultivating uh, we've been over at Chesterford doing the heavier sort of hillier land we like to get that moved as quickly as we can uh, this time of year um, you don't want to get caught out we don't want a year like last year where things suddenly get wet 
Uh, we've been planting cover crops as well. We've got 150 acres of a cover crop which has got uh, a phacelia, uh, a turnip, rape, a fodder, radish, um, and sunflower mix in it. Um, we grow, uh, yeah, we grow a varying amount of cover crops each year, and we quite like what they do. Um, so that that's been established. We've been doing a lot of HLS work as well this time of year. A lot of the work on the environmental schemes can start to happen. Different areas will have different conditions or different options upon them. So um, we're dictated to but by when we can cut them and remove the clippings and what we can do. So we sort of have ongoing work with that, um, which has been good. We've got a, a diversification project going ahead uh, on the farm where we're putting a dog walking exercise field in, um, which has been a bit of a learning curve. So that's been good. And um, we've also just got some planning permission to convert some barns on the farm at Swaffing Prior, some old sort of pretty redundant now um, sheds, agricultural sheds into uh, industrial units. So that's kind of getting exciting. That's uh, the direction that we're, we are being forced to go in to a certain degree. Um, but we, you know, we're, we're reasonably diversified here now. But uh, with the way the subsidy's going, you know, we're going to lose 25% next year, and we've got to have uh, we've got to have something there to keep us farming. The guys have been brilliant all harvest. Um, Harvey has been it's his first harvest with us, and he's now uh, looking to go to college. And we're sort of talking now about him coming and doing some time with us whilst he's at college. Um, he's been a really, really sort of valued team member this year. For someone of his age, he's picked things up unbelievably quickly and um, w w where we are geographically you have to be able to think for yourself with the farms being all over the place you know we can't my brother and I can't always be everywhere but Harvey's been brilliant sort of thinking on his feet and getting on with it.